Hey guys, Chef Pat from Hollerbox Willow Tree Cafe here. Uh, happy to bring to you guys a new YouTube series called In the Kitchen with Oma. This is a special project to my heart because I feel like we've lost track of cooking with our grandparents and with our families. So I wanted to bring in all the Omas that I could find that were willing to help us out and get in the kitchen with them, learn some old school techniques, learn some recipes, just hear some history about how it was back in the day because I miss hearing that in my life, and hopefully you guys do too. Hey guys, we're here in the kitchen with Oma, and this is my first German Oma. This is Doris Robinson. Uh, Doris, how long have you been with us here at the Willow Tree? 14 years. Doris has been here for 14 years, so she's been my German Oma for 14 years. And tell everybody what we're gonna make today, Doris. We're gonna make Rollbraten, Mehlklöße, und falsche Soße. Sounds good, I'm gonna learn with you guys. All right, so I know first and foremost, Doris is worried about getting this in the oven, so it takes, uh, two, it takes and a half a, hour, two and a half hours to cook. Yeah. All right, so this is a pork butt roast. It's got a nice little cap of fat on it. It's uh, got some nice lean meat, and it's netted, so it stays together when it cooks, right? Yeah. All right, that's all I know. The rest, Doris is going to tell me what to do. We're using a little bit of my secret spice here and we rub it all in that spice. Oh, we're gonna rub it on there? Yeah, yeah. All right, so this? You can do all in the foil because like this, it's late. And you really rub it in. All right, I'll really rub it in. Yeah. I'll let you rub it in, now you have gloves in a minute. Okay. Do we put this secret spice too? Hold on, we oh, need sorry. more, this is not, sorry. that's not good at all. all right. We have both sides. Uh, I forgot the pork roast has two sides to it, you're right. And a little bit on this side. A little bit oh on this yeah, side, we, right. we are very generous with this. And a little bit on the fat side, oh, it wants it to. On all sides, we really rub that in. We want the flavor all in there. All right, now we're gonna come with secret spice number two. And uh, no. Salt and now pepper. Garlic. Garlic. Okay. Pure garlic. Be generous. Don't worry. We like to be generous with garlic. No blau. No blau. Go. Good. So where'd you learn to cook, Doris? Mama, in the kitchen, I was 10 years old. She went out, my grandfather had a farm, so she had to help. So she put me all the ingredients there. She said, make it, schnitzel, gemüse, kartoffel. Okay. And that's how it started. And that's, that's how it started. And then I got married really young. And then when I was not afraid of all, I just then alternated. And then of course, you know, I moved a little bit Latin. Puerto Rico. Doris lived in Puerto Rico for 20, 24 years, something like that. 23, yeah. And so, uh, so a lot I of Doris's German food, right, is uh, what, what are they, fusion, right? Yeah, so things I couldn't get in Puerto Rico, I invented it, I made it up, you know. Like everything over there is adobo. It worked, but not my favorite one. And what else are we going to do now? We need mustard. We need mustard, all right. How much mustard are we going to go? Schmear a little bit. Schmear there. a little bit. Bad boy likes this. He wants to be happy. We make him happy, happy, happy. Oh, we love the happy pork loin. Is that enough or you need one more spoon? No. And it's actually good to do it already in there because the flavors are all in there. You know what I mean? On the foil? Yeah. Because like this, you're not wasting none of the condiments. And now we need our paprika. Paprika. This is not a smoked paprika, this is just a plain regular paprika, right? I don't know, it's zero paprika. Oh, is it? It's not from my kitchen. Yeah, so. It's just a regular paprika, it's not smoked or spicy or anything. Okay, because sometimes I use like a Hungarian paprika in my kitchen. I have a hard, a medium and a sweet home. But this is for goulash, not for this. Okay? Good? Good? Yeah, I'm excited. All right, so what's going to be next? We're gonna, I think you should jump in because well. Sure, what are we gonna do? I want onions okay. and peppers. I wanna well. You going to lay them over the top? We're gonna go like this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hold on, okay, peppers, okay, okay. Peppers, peppers, peppers. We're gonna alternate onions and peppers? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There we go. Right here. No, I, want a few I, I cut all the uh, onions and peppers before uh, before Doris got here, so they, they might not be perfect how, how she's used to it. This is okay. We'll make it work though, right? We'll make it 
All right, now what are we gonna do? Now comes the wine. Now comes wine, some nice German white wine, just around the edges. On top. On top. Easy, easy. Let it sink a little bit because we don't want to drop the yeah. nice and easy. Baptize it like it's in a little bath. Oh, yeah. okay, perfect. It's enough? Yeah. All right. And you want... Now we're going to wrap it with foil? Yeah, we got to close it. All right. I mean... So I got okay. another foil over here. You can use that, but yeah, you know how to wrap it. I'm going to wrap it up this way. We're going to have a space here. Extra tight. Not too dark. Not but too make tight. sure the wine co doesn't come out. Right. You know? So it's sealed yeah. top and bottom. Yeah. It's going to be a 350 degree oven for, I'm going to guess an hour and 45 minutes. Door says two and a In half hours. In my stove, two hours because I want it nice, you know. My ovens inside. are a little bit uh, hotter here at the restaurant, I think. And so I don't like my pork. Pink, I want it to cook. doesn't like medium pork. No. Uh, so we'll make sure it's well done. It's going to go in the oven and then uh, we'll get going on the next stuff. So the roll brought in the oven mm -hmm. and uh, Doris was saying uh, something about letting it marinate. Yeah, you can do this the night before. You prep it the way I just showed you and you keep it in your fridge and in the morning you take it and put it in the oven. Maybe just take a little bit longer because it's cold. Yeah, maybe that's why it's my two and a half hour. No, makes sense now. No. All right. Now, okay. before we do anything, we're gonna put salt in put the salt water in the water. Before we forget, I'm not gonna forget, but Doris is worried about forgetting. How much salt do you want to put? One teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half. Good. All right. <laughs> for good luck. For good luck. One for good luck. All right. Now I'm gonna put the lid back on and I'm gonna turn it up to get it boiling while Doris is making mail closer. Yep. Now mail closer. What does that mean, literally? Flour dumplings. Flour dumplings, all right, so. It's a little bit like your spätzle, mm -hmm. what you do make homemade. So, in the past, there was no fancy machines and none of this who gave you, you know, that little trick. Yeah, fancy spätzle makers here. Yeah, so. So what are we gonna start with, Doris? We're gonna start flour. with flour. It's just regular all-purpose flour. Yeah. It's about a cup. This is Oma's measurement, so we, yeah, we don't have cups we, and spoons. We, we really didn't have measurement like a cup or whatever. So I mean, uh, this, Mama this is, showed me like that. Oma showed, this, uh, Oma showed my mom and then my mom showed me. So it goes through tradition. We don't measure much. We see, just, down south, I learned how to make biscuits from my grandma. And uh -huh. that's kind of the same way it gets passed on from generation uh -huh. to generation in a bowl with this much. Like how much buttermilk? Like, I don't know this much. Exactly. So is that what we're like gonna be doing, right? This is how we learned. All right. We make a little ditch in the middle. So in Germany, they're ditches. In America, they're wells. We're gonna make a well in the middle. <laughs> Whatever you call it. We make just a little right. hole there, you know. Now what? I wanna now, do stuff. Eggs, salt, mm, pepper? Salt. Salt, all right. How much salt? Mm. Yeah. That's good. Pepper. All right, pepper. Good. A little more. A little more pepper. Garlic. Garlic. I can use a spoon so my fingers aren't stinky. Oh, for the garlic, huh? A little more. A little bit more. We're not shy. Actually, in Germany, we don't cook so much with garlic. Knoblauch. We say this smells too much in your body, so they don't want to have that. It's because there's lots of vampires in Germany and they're scared they're gonna... But it was in the kitchen and I tried it and I think this gives flavor. This is a little bit added on from me. I like it. So now what are we gonna do next? Eggs. Aya. Aya. All right. And I want it in the middle. One egg in the middle. Uh-huh. One more. One more. Two this eggs This is in the good. Middle. That's enough? Yeah. All right. For what we have here, yeah. If you see it's not enough, then you definitely have to put more flour or whatever, you know? Okay. And then basically, uh, we fold this all together. You don't add the milk yet? Y yes, but uh, I like to... Mix the yolks? Yeah, mix the yolks a little bit. All right, so Doris is gonna crack the yolks here. Just get that mixing so it mixes well. Okay. And then a little milk. Good. Like this. Uh -huh. And then this is a little 
trick from Oma to Mama to the daughter. Club soda to keep them light and bubbling. Club soda, soda water. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. In a little bit. All right. And then basically. You can always put some in, but you can't always take some out, right? Very true. All right. So Doris is going to give that a good mix. And she's, uh, I believe, going to go by just the feel and by the eyeball to know when it's ready. Because uh, you've done this a couple times, right? Mm. So, German cooking, I've learned Semmelklöse. More club soda. More club soda. I've okay. learned, what are the okay. potato dumplings? So there's bread dumplings, potato dumplings, and now these are flour dumplings. Yeah. And there's the halb und halb. Oh, the half and half. Those are half mashed potatoes and half raw potatoes that are shredded, club right? More club soda. See, she's not shy to tell me what to do. You what, wanna basically... What's your favorite of all the dumplings? You like mail closer? I do like my mail closer, but I really like the potato one, the one you really squash from scratch on. Mama made them real big. More club soda, please. And the folding is the same because you don't want it too dense. If you do it just like this crazy, get stuff. You don't want them doff, so that's why you fold this in. Nice tender dumplings. More club soda, please, on the side. Doris forgot her, what is it called? My what? Your spatula. My Kochlöffel. She forgot this it at home today. This is better with a Kochlöffel, but you know. This is all I got. We have to make two for Oma today. Next time though. How's it looking now? I have them home, I cook just with Kochlöffel. I want a little bit more on, Club on the border. Yeah, not on the dog. There we go. It's coming together. So it looks like a mix between uh, biscuit dough and waffle batter almost, in my chef's opinion. It's not, not quite like as, your spätzle? Not like spätzle. Spe our spätzle batter is a lot thinner than that because we're pressing it through the, uh, through oh, the spätzle maker. That's true. So it can't be so thick as it doesn't go through the holes. That's true. And this is the thing, you know when it's ready, when it's forming, you see? Starting to make the ball instead of just being yeah. lots of little stuff around everywhere. It looks like it's starting to come off the side of the bowls a little bit better yeah. too once it's starting to mix. See, and this is when you know you have your dumpling mix. And we're doing this ahead of time because it's going to need to rest. The gluten is starting good. to develop yeah. in the flour and if we don't let it rest, it's going to get tough. So after Doris is done mixing this, we're going to set it aside to rest for 10-15 minutes just so the dumplings come out nice and tender when they're done. And normally if you're not sure what you're doing, you take a little bit and you gotta see if it comes from your spoon, it's good. And it's done? All right. This is a little trick. So you know when you don't have your recipe and your measurements, you try a little bit. It comes out better with a Kochlöffel, you know? Kochlöffel. Mm. So it doesn't, whenever you pull a piece and it doesn't mm -hmm. stick, that's when it's done? Yeah. So mm. this is good. This is really good. I'm proud of me doing it with this. Nice. Good job. High five. Okay, now it's time for Falsche Sauce. So which means fake sauce, right? Fake sauce. So, this, from my understanding, as Doris told me, uh, came from not having like stocks and stuff back in the day. If you didn't have meat, you know, and you couldn't do a meat gravy because there was no available or whatever. And you can't eat without gravy. And you cannot have a dumpling without a gravy. That's true. All right. So I know the basics here. I know I'm gonna make a root. A root. All right, so I got my pan warming here. I'm gonna get some, uh, some butter in here. What do you think? Three of these good, Doris? Oh yeah. It's probably about three tablespoons of butter. I eyeball this crap. Yeah. And I use a, uh, a cooking spoon for that too. Surprise, surprise, yeah. We cook with wooden spoons in Germany. This is a thing. Don't know why, but that's. Because they hold all the flavor. And that's different ones, you know. All right, so butter's melting. And the next thing I'm going to do flour. is add the flour. Let me get this melted all the way here. So 
We go one, two, three. Let's see if that's enough. And how long are we going to cook it for? This is going to go really quick, but right now I just want to make sure you have no more lumps in there. And then you open the... How's that? Good? Need a little more flour? A little bit more, I would say. Flour? Yeah, a little bit All right. more. So I've got my Spoonful. backup flour over here, like this. Yeah. You know, you want it to have it nice and thick, because you don't want to... Sick. Yeah, I cannot say that. Thick. Word. We want I make fun of Doris a lot. Dicke See, Soße. I make her talk German just because. Dicke Soße, you know? You don't want water sauce, you know? Right. You want the spoon and, you know? Thick gravy. Yeah. All right, so Ruth's cooking. We put the uh, cubitos in. Cubitos, that's, that's <laughs> a very German word, right? So these are... Uh, Magi Würfel. <laughs> bouillon cubes, uh, beef flavored. Uh, Maggi brand, which is prevalent in just about oh, everywhere, no. but especially crumble in Germany. It. You crumble it. All right, so we're gonna crumble this and put it right in the roux. Uh -huh. All right, like that. Uh -huh. And then again with the second uh -huh. one. Oh, how do you do this by yourself? I need help. I would already have done that, pre-prepped it. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> Sorry guys. Chef today. <laughs> Can you bring the fire a little bit down? Sure. I'm Sorry I'm stepping in, but you It's know. okay, I'm being beat by bouillon cube right now. Alright, here we go. You can really start to smell the uh, the flour and the butter toasting, and then when the, the beef bouillon hits it, it's got a really, really nice aroma to it. Alright. And if Alright, I'm ready now. Keep stirring. Ooh, yeah. All I'll that whiskey, sweating my huh? muzzle, yeah, yeah. Work and out. do it for days. Alright, so we're gonna cook the roux. With the beef in it, it's kinda of hard to tell when it turns. And uh, like French, we learned blonde roux, peanut butter roux, brown roux. It's all different stages of your flour cooking in the roux. Uh, so we're gonna let it cook. Been cooking about two minutes now. Then what are we gonna do? Water. You gonna go water? Okay. You wanna? I'll whisk it, and you can pour it. That would work. I get you water. All right. So. Better less as more. You know. I was gonna say why? Why a little bit at a time? We want a nice consistency. Oh, it's too thick. It's like, it's too thick. But we don't want it too too. I think that's overdid it now. I think you'll be all right. Still got some flour hiding over in the corner here. Yeah, it just needs to. See, I see why you need your wooden spoon now, so I can get all in the you corners, see? right? You see? See, that was my choke. All right, Doris going in with a little black pepper, a little granulated garlic, a little bit of Oma Secret Spice number two, just a little bit. A dash, what you call here. And then the famous Maggi. What is Maggi? It's almost like soya sauce. I put, I literally when I came, when I went down to Puerto Rico and I wanted to cook German food and I couldn't get no Maggi, I used soya sauce. It works too, but the flavor is a little bit, it's not that, that salty as, as uh, soya sauce. But if you're in a pinch and can't find Maggi, it's okay to use soy it's sauce? It's okay. You may want to use the one with light sodium. So it's not so salty? Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing I've learned cooking, you know, with my grandma and just with with people in general. If you don't got it, you can fake it, right? It's like if you don't have beef or meat, yeah. you can make fake gravy, right? Fake gravy. If you don't have this garlic, you can use a different garlic. If you don't have onion this powder, paprika, you can do it onion powder. You don't have to use the garlic. Just make it good, right? Mm -hmm. All right. 
So let's see. Actually, now I wish I had my paprika back. A little dash of paprika I wouldn't have hurt. Oh, uh, see, we went through that. Yeah. You want all my secret spice number one? Because it's hiding over here. Oh! No. No. Not the gravy. Okay. Let's see. You try it and see. I'm using my spoon here because there's still a little bit of roux in the yeah. edges, so I want to make sure it gets all mixed up. If I wouldn't need that, I would. Uh, That's okay. We got more spoons around. This one will be good. Though. So it's starting to get nice and thick here. See, it coats the spoon. This is uh, how they taught us in school when you're making reduction sauce. If you can put a line on the back of the spoon, that means it's thick enough. I think it has enough salt. Is it good flavor-wise? Yes, I, like I would it. like to. I want to see what you did, Chef. Let's see if it'll pass. I'd take a little more pepper. Oh, shoot. It needs more water, too, I think. See, I like salt. It's a little salty for Doris, I think. But it's getting very thick, so we're going to be able to put more water in it and thin it down some. Yeah. And that's why it's important to taste your food, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, you can't take any out, so I'm just put a little in. You always can re it with a little bit of flour if you want to do thin on it, you know? But flavor-wise, yeah, it's almost thin. It's a whisking face like this. Oh, we definitely don't need nothing. All right, and we're gonna let that come to a boil and thicken all the way. And then we do wanna bring that water back up to boil, too, right? Turn that up, all righty. How do you think the dough looks? You think it's rested enough? Oh yeah, it's ready to go. Very good. All right, so gravy's uh, gonna finish coming to a boil, finish thickening. We're gonna adjust the seasoning, make sure it's good. And then we're gonna make the dumplings after the water comes to a boil. Yeah. All right, okay. so the meal closer. The dough's been resting for about 10, 15 minutes yeah. while we made the gravy and while the water's coming to a boil. Yeah. So now Doris is gonna show us how to cook them. First of all, when you do check on your dough when it's resting, because if it runs away, it when do thin, then you have to alternate it a little bit. But since I do this for a long time, so mine's is perfect. Of course it's perfect. Now, when they come <coughs> out, we have a blade and it has to have a, a bowl. Hmm. This would pass, we'd be a suppendella. A soup plate. And so what are we gonna do? We're gonna take a little one and we put it upside down and we put it in there. Because when your dumplings are out, you use not a schaum löffel, but you know what a schaum löffel is? This. It's a bigger spoon with a lot of more holes. A slotted spoon. It's a schaum löffel bus. And then you take them out in that so the water runs as much as it can. And then you put it in there and then whatever moisture or more water is, gonna run under there. Oh, that goes under the plate, that yep. way it doesn't sit yep. on top. Mm -hmm. Very crafty. All right, so what oh, do you think? Start. Boil, boil, boil. I really need it super hard. You put the lid back on? As yeah, hard as it because it needs to bubble as much because constantly you will see we put them in, put them in, and they have to come up. All right. So as soon as we take the lid off, it stops though, so. No, it will stay. Okay. It will stop a little bit when we put it in, but it comes back. You can leave it completely on high. It's yeah. not very high, yes. Then you use two spoons or use one spoon? I use... Okay, there's the thing. It depends how big you want them. You want little ones, you use a coffee spoon. Now, Oma was in a rush, whatever. She said, this is too much work, that little one. We take a bigger one. You can even do bigger. If you want, you can make them that big. It's up to you. It just takes longer to cook that way? It takes longer to cook, exactly. All right, are our bubbles looking good now? Yeah. All right. So, there's the thing. Spoon gets to put into the water. Needs to be hot. You go in here, you fold, and you dump it. It's 
spoon. You see how nice they're coming up. Pretty good at that. Every time you dip? And then how do you tell when they're done? A few minutes when they come up. They'll float? They'll float. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like spetzels where they uh, float to the top when they're done. But they will not float right now. I'll show you later on how. I'm starting to get hungry, guys. They may not all be even, you know. It's like an eyeballing more thing, how you want them. You know what I mean? Sure. Imperfections make them perfect, right? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting on my water to come up a little bit more no, again. We, should we put the lid back on to make no, it boil more? No, no, no more lids. No more lids. No, this is the thing. There's no lid allowed in there. See, the first one is coming up. I'm starting to come up. Mm -hmm. Camera, see Camera? it in there? You see this guy is starting to, starting to float. Not all the way, but just coming off the bottom a little bit. Uh, a lot of doughs and pastas, like dumplings, stuff like that. That's how you can tell when they're done, is when they come all the way up to the top and float, because they're, uh, they're cooked all the way. Mm -hmm. They're just going to pretty much make one layer on the bottom there. We can help out a little bit and let them loose. In case they stick. Yes, because then you can already put a second layer in it and they're not getting together. See how nice? That's my new one I just put in. So you might need a minute. These are starting to look really nice. Mm -hmm. Place your spoon on to feel what it feels like. Oh, they're still very soft. Oh yeah. It, it takes a few minutes because we have no boiling water right now. But that will help. I mean, as soon as it's boiled, five, Oma's six minutes for sure. used to cooking with gas. Sure. I know when Oma made the real big ones, this is 20 minutes. When you make them like this medium, 10, 10 minutes. 12 minutes because your water stops, unfortunately. So you need to wait again. It's a little time consuming. Time lapse. Ding. So, you know what I mean? so yes. it took like five minutes to come back to a boil. So yeah. really they've been boiling hard for five minutes. And we like the way they look, right? They're I starting like to get puffy. I get puffy. Doris says to turn them over and not to poke them. So we turn them over. Now we can see it's all starting to cook nice. Mm -hmm. They're starting to get nice and smooth and it's starting to look like a dumpling. So what do you think, five more minutes maybe? Yeah, we can always do one thing, you dry one. You take them out, you open it and check them out. How do we feel about our dumplings? I think I feel better about them now. Me too. I think it's you. You are I think it'll be that. good, yeah. It'll be fine. They taste done. Mm. They taste done. I shake it a little bit up there so I take not all the water. And then you just lay them a little bit. And in German, say you eat with the eyes. Because we like our food to look pretty. Presentation. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't look good, we don't eat it. Beautiful. There we go. And then we dash it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if you want to really be richer, you can smack a little bit butter right on top of it. Little flakes. Because in Germany we believe butter is good on everything. We believe that here too. Huh? We butter people. Pork, potatoes huh? and butter and bread. Huh? Works, I'm right? Stay on there. Yeah. Good enough. It's okay. Thank you. And now I'm going to do this little sucker. Yeah. All right. While well, Doris is working on the next round of mail closer, I went and got the roll brought out of the oven. See the peppers cook nice. The wine stayed in to keep it moist. 
Let me get my Should tongs. make a picture from that. You see there? Got it? Alright. So we're gonna find the net here. The peppers are not important, that was really just a flavor issue. I could have left the paper and pepper them Got it? Yeah. You want to make sure when you open it, you don't rip the meat apart and you just take that net out. There we go. You see it's nice and tender and starting, starting to fall apart there. Sorry for flinging it. It's okay. It's I like meat. messy when you cook, right? I like meat. Alright. So we're just going to slice it. You see how tender that is? Time to wake up, Doris. Yes, I know. And you've just got this really nice, very tender pork roast here. And the seasoning on the outside. And how we like to serve it, you see that nice sauce there? We like to put it in there. You put it back in the sauce? No. Oh. I mean, Smells good. Mm -hmm. This is... This is almost happy place. This is my happy hour now. Happy, happy, happy hour. This is good. So here we are with this plated dish in our first edition of In the Kitchen with Oma. So I wanted to, to join them at the end and just do the best part, which is eating it. So Doris, tell us a little bit more about this, uh, this final dish that I have before me. Well, this is one of the oldest creation. When people were not rich and they had to feed a lot of mouses, so the mail closer was easy to do. Falsche sauce. Of course, you can alternate it with the brosse was in the meat and can make really a meat sauce when you have that. But what we always had in Germany is beer and wine. And especially with pork, always a rich food, a nice, nice dry wine, but really süffig, what we say. It's not sweet. Süffig. Süffig is, is drinkable. It's really nice and smooth. Oh, wow, that's a very nice suggestion yeah. of the dish. It, it, the spices and the wine go yes, really well together. Yes, because you don't want something sweet. I know some people like sweet wine, but not with this. The sweet wine would be like after you're done with that, or you have a nice clear beer. That means a lager bass. This is nice and clear, and it's one of our oldest brewery, the Eichinger over there. I like this part where Doris can talk and I mm -hmm. can eat. And this goes very well with all of this here too. Cheers! Prost! Prost. Prost. So how did you make this gravy? It's so delicate. I thought that maybe it would be too heavy, but it is just really pleasant. Well, it gets heavy in one moment, but what we do is we put water. Okay. We tend to right back down. Because, yeah, it you know, it, it is a root, so you can... Yeah, that came out nice. And of course you can, like I said, tomorrow, what here I have left from the mail closer, you, you put butter in a, in a saute pan, Put a little scallop, onion, garlic powder, onion powder, whatever you like, and you fry them in there. And it's like... I want more gravy. What? Pat wants more gravy? The milk clothes don't need a gravy, you know what I mean? So when's the last time you made this dish and who did you make it for? Milk clothes are you gonna laugh? <laughs> I'm already laughing. In Puerto Rico? Mm -hmm. I couldn't get my hands on dumpling, no way. My kids like the German food, so did my husband. So I said, why are we not doing grandmom's old mail closing? I was famous down there for my mail closing. <laughs> I'm sure they missed you when you moved back. <laughs> I did them with all kinds of sauces, whatever, you know, found stews left or whatever. That was mail closing. And the meat? Can't go wrong on the meat. Oh, yeah. So this is a special uh, blend of seasonings and from Doris's secret cabinet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, All in Puerto Rico it was adobo. <laughs> <laughs> Everything with adobo was better. But you know, 
you cannot get the German product. It's like I wanted to do a Hungarian goulash in Puerto Rico and I couldn't get my hand on the meat and it frustrated me. Yeah. So I says, oh, there is some chicken. Chop the chicken, eight pieces out of a whole one, put this as a paprikash. It came out so good, everybody liked it, my chicken paprikash. I love Doris too because she always talks about flavor. Like when she'll eat something, she's like, best flavor. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Every time I hear that, I always think of Doris. And for her, it's not about spicy. It just needs, it needs oomph. Is what the she garlic says. and onion and just flavor. The flavorful. Meat has to be flavorful. And you guys did a really good job keeping this very moist too and juicy. It's not dried out at all. I didn't get any peppers in it though. I want some peppers. <laughs> I don't know what I think they're all still with it. Well, the thing is that if you don't have wine home to put wine in there, you could do the same thing in beer. Braise it in beer. So long you have some moisture in it and in the aluminium, the meat stays better. You could do that roast without it on a grill. It doesn't evaporate. Yeah. yeah, you could do it in a grill. There's no problem with that, but it would dry more out. You know what I mean? I do. But like this, can't get any better. So chef, your verdict, really? You liked Oma's food? I'm, I'm good with it. Okay. I, I'll, I'll come over after work one night for a uh, nice go. dinner. Anytime. Well, awesome. Doris, thank you so much for You're sharing so this welcome. with us. And Patrick for being a good kitchen assistant today. I'm sure that was fun. I'm not used to taking orders. <laughs> And guys, if you liked Kitchen with Oma, we plan to do a lot more here at Hollerbox Poultry Cafe. Make sure to like us, follow us, subscribe us. We're all over the place. So if you want to hear more from us, just follow us and we'll be giving you more content soon. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers!